Hey folks, Miss Gosling here. In this video, you are going to learn about escape velocity. By the end of the video, you'll be able to determine the minimum velocity needed to escape an object's gravitational field, so that way you can one day captain a spaceship, or at least design its, uh, design one. So, to begin with, escape velocity is defined as the minimum speed needed to escape the gravitational field of an object. Now, just a heads up, if we're looking at an electron orbiting a proton, instead of gravitational field, we could be looking at an electric field as well. Um, but in this video, we are going to just worry about gravitational fields. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about escape velocity. So before I introduce, so I want to actually go about deriving the equation that we use to find our escape velocity. Um, because I think it's actually a pretty simple derivation and something that's easy f that would be helpful for y'all to know so you can understand where this equation comes from. So we're going to start by talking about conservation of energy, which states that our initial energy is equal to our final energy. Um, now, when our spaceship is on Earth, it's going to have potential energy, and it's also going to have kinetic energy. Um, which, excuse me, let me go ahead and write the proper terminology here. So we've got our initial potential energy and our initial kinetic energy. Um, and our potential energy is due to our, our existence, our rocket's position within the gravitational field of the Earth. And that kinetic energy is due to the fact that the rocket is going to be moving since it needs some velocity to escape the Earth. And that is going to equal our total potential final energy. Now, our final potential energy must, of course, be zero because we are escaping the Earth's gravitational field. So our, poten our gravitational potential is zero and our gravitational potential energy must therefore be zero. A little less obviously, our final kinetic energy is also going to be zero because we want our minimum velocity needed to escape the surface. So that means I don't need any velocity left by the time I've made it out of the Earth's gravitational field. Um, because I've already escaped the Earth's gravitational field and don't need any more, ener any more kinetic energy to keep me moving further away from the Earth. So that means that our total final energy is zero. So our total initial energy must also be zero. So let's go ahead and expand our equation out and find our equation for our final escape velocity. So our initial potential energy is given by negative g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of our rocket ship, or our satellite here, uh, divided by the radius of the Earth. And our kinetic energy, which I'm going to go ahead and draw in green, is given by our classic 1 half times the mass of the satellite times our escape velocity squared. And all that together must be equal to zero. So that means that our kinetic energy must be equal to our potential energy, energy, so 1 half times the mass of the satellite times our escape velocity squared is equal to g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by the radius of the Earth. And I can also go ahead and get rid of my like terms. And really quickly here, I do want to mention we're giving the radius of the Earth as our denominator because we're assuming that our object is starting on the surface of the Earth, so that's far, how far it is from the Earth's center of mass. Um, so anywho, we've canceled out our um, satellite masses, and we are going to get, then, solving for our escape velocity, that our escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2g times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. And there you have it, folks. That is our escape velocity, the velocity, the minimum velocity needed for an object to get out of the Earth's gravitational field. So let's go ahead and do an example. Spaceman Spiff has a mass of 20 kilograms. Um, if he escapes from the Earth's gravitational field by traveling at 11.4 kilometers per second, what is the mass of the Earth? Um, and one piece of information that I forgot to add here that you would need is that the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. So let's go ahead and start by listing out our givens. 
So I know that the mass of our satellite is 20 kilograms. I also know that our escape velocity is 11.4 times 10 to the third meters per second. And you'll notice I added that 10 to the third to um, go from kilometers per second to meters per second. Finally, I of course have my radius of the earth, which is 6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters. And I am trying to find my, the mass of the earth, M E. So I'm going to use my escape velocity equation, VE equals the square root of 2gm over r of the earth. So solving for the mass of the earth, that gives me that the mass of the earth is equal to v squared times the radius of the earth divided by 2g. Substituting and solving, I get that the mass of the earth is 11.4 times 10 to the third quantity squared times 6.37 times 10 to the sixth divided by 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, giving us that the mass of the earth is 6.2 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And there you have it. That is one way we can use the um, escape velocity equation to solve problems. So as you know, when we're escaping from the surface of the Earth, our escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2gm over r. However, when we're already in orbit, so think like the International Space Station, our escape velocity is actually given by the square root of gm over r. Now, I'm not going to get into the why here because it goes into explaining a little bit about a little more than it goes a little more in depth than this class does. Um, but it is important that you know that v escape from orbit is square root, is the square root of two uh, is the v escape from Earth divided by the square root of two. Um, so we get rid of that square root of two factor. So two goes with Earth, no two goes with orbit. So let's go ahead and look at another example. Pluto sick of not being considered a real planet, decides to leave our solar system for a nicer one. If the sun has a mass of 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, and Pluto is 5.9 times 10 to the 9th kilometers away from the sun, how fast must Pluto travel to escape our solar system? So here we are looking for our escape velocity in orbit. So we're going to use our escape velocity for an object in orbit. Um, and I'm not going to go through the givens and unknowns because I think you guys can figure that out yourself. Um, let's, so we're going to start right here with our V escape for orbit equation, which is given by the square root of G times the mass of the planet. So in this case, that is the mass of the sun. Um, so that's the thing we're escaping from, divided by the distance between Pluto and the sun. So the radius from Pluto to the sun. Plugging in our numbers, we get that our escape velocity is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of the sun, which is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, divided by the distance from Pluto to the sun, 5.9 times 10 to the 12th meters. And you'll notice I am multiplying my distance in kilometers by 10 to the third to get my distance in meters. When I plug that into my calculator, I get that my escape velocity it's about 4,800 meters per second. And I'm gonna just go ahead and round to two sig figs. So that is the minimum speed that um, Pluto would have to travel at to escape the, um, escape the sun. For context, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. So Pluto would have to be traveling almost 14 times the speed of sound in order to escape the um, Earth's gravity or the Sun's gravitational field. Okay, so with that, let's talk takeaways. First of all, escape velocity is the minimum speed needed to escape an object's gravitational field, and it is not affected by the mass of the object doing the escaping. 
So my escape velocity from the Earth is going to be the same as the escape velocity of an elephant, which will be the same as the escape velocity of the entire Empire State Building. Um, and we can see that in our escape velocity equations, in which the mass of the object being escaped from is in the equation, but that mass of the object doing the escaping um, cancels out since it's in both our potential and kinetic energy equations. Um, so with that, you now know all about escape velocity. It is your turn to do some practice problems. Best of luck and happy solving.